Well, I'm, we're just going to get into it, just going to jump in right there. Is that good? Thank you, Lord. Father, I'm so grateful for your word. I'm so thankful for this house. I'm so thankful for your word, your unfailing word. Uh, the greatest thing in our lives that we have is your unfailing word and the life of your spirit within Mm, Father, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to be part of a household of faith. I'm thankful, Father, that, uh, that you put me um, in a place where I could learn and know you and walk with you and uh, to live out the good plan that you have for my life. And even, even more than that, that you can use me to bring heaven and your love and your power uh, to bear on someone else's life. I'm thankful, Father. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for our pastors. Father, I'm thankful for our pastors that have a heart after you. I'm thankful for your promise that when we follow after you, that you plant us in a place where you give us pastors after your own heart who will lead us and teach us with knowledge. I'm grateful, Father, that you're a keeper of your word. Hallelujah. If you agree with that, say amen. 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 So I was thinking about the... Um, the confession that our uh, our offering confession and that part of it that says, uh, oh, what's the last part? My life will bring increase uh, to the kingdom of God. My life will bring increase to the kingdom of God. One of my life verses that I declare, words of life that I declare over over myself, over my household, and over you as this body of believers is the last verse in Psalms 92. And it's talking about those that be planted in the house of the Lord. And that verse says, and this is my declaration, that we are living memorials in the earth to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. That the Lord is upright and faithful to his word. That's, that's a true, that, that's a life verse for me that we walk in, that, uh, that we walk in the promises of God. And even more than that, that I can take the word of God and show others and bring it to bear in others' life uh, that the Lord is upright and he's faithful to his word. He'll do what his word will say. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Lord. So tonight we are still talking about divine healing, but we're going to talk about faith and faith that gets results. How many of you know our faith should get results? There's no such thing as uh, faith failure, uh, real Bible faith, because real Bible faith does not fail. And, and our faith should be getting results. Amen? So Bible faith or faith that receives needs nothing but God's word to act on. That's it. Bible faith or faith that receives needs nothing but God's word to act on. Can we go to John 4? <clears throat> this is the account of the healing of the nobleman's son. And I want to take... a. Uh, a look at it. We're going to start in verse 46. And it says, So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And I've read this so many times, and I've thought, Lord, why did you, why did you put that there? Uh, because the, 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 very, uh, the very next verse says, The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down ere my child die. And then Jesus said something to him. And so again, just, just as I've, I've read this so many times and, and asking the Lord, you know, why, why, did you, why did you 
say that, that unless you see signs and wonders, you said these words to him, that you will not believe. I believe that the Lord was leading this man away from signs and wonders in order to believe uh, just with simple faith, just to believe his word so that power could be released in his life. He was trying to move him away from needing to see something in order to believe. All right. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Jesus spoke a word. He, 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 he spoke a word. He didn't go with him. He didn't go lay his hands on him. All Jesus did was speak a word, and he said, Go thy way, your son liveth. What was the very next, the very next phrase after that? And the man believed. Oh, this is important. This is important. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Oh, my goodness. The man believed the word that Jesus has spoken. Do you know that believing, believing, believing is a choice? We choose what we're going to believe. Amen. It's a choice. This is later on. This is later in, in my notes here. But we must, oh, no, let me say this. Faith isn't faith until it moves ahead without physical proof. Faith is not faith until it moves ahead without physical proof. Now, you'll see here that the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And what did he do? He went his way. Is that right? He went his way. Jesus spoke the living word. The man believed and the man went his way. Man, this is good. This truth right here of this story and this next one that we're going to look, like, look at, uh, these truths are what has held me steady uh, on a path when sometimes what we're believing for doesn't come instantaneously. Okay? Thank you, Lord. So faith isn't faith until it moves ahead without physical proof. Jesus' word was all that this man needed. That's all people of faith ever need. Come on now. That's all. God's word is all that people of faith need. Amen. Amen. He acted on what Jesus said to him, and he went his way. <clears throat> All right, and then it said, verse 51, And as he was now going down, his servants met him, and he told him, saying, Thy son liveth. And then uh, the father inquired of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So this tells us a couple of things, that it, the, uh, it must have taken him over a day to get back to where his son was. He had, he had been traveling for a while, right? And when he asked the, the servant, he said, uh, when did he begin to, what, what word did he use? Amend. What does that mean? What hour did he begin to get better? Amen. And uh, he was able to pinpoint it that he began to get better. He began to amend when Jesus spoke the word and the father believed and went his way. That's when he began to get better. And this was the first healing miracle that Jesus did. It was the second miracle that he did following the turning of uh, water into wine. This is the first healing healing miracle and this is where we get really messed up sometimes is that uh, as believers we forfeit miracles if they're not instantaneous just because this healing did not occur instantaneously but he began to get better he began to recover it is still a miracle 
And so, so many times we, we don't want to be caught with our pants down, so to speak, that we're, we're confessing or we're believing something, but if we don't see it instantaneously, then we just drop our faith. And we forfeit the miracle. We forfeit the miracle. So it said the man responded to Jesus' words, amen, and he believed and he went his way, amen. And, and so I think Pastor uh, referenced this a while ago as well. We don't, we don't ever want to be, this is what I'm talking about, about believing being a choice. Uh, do you remember when the disciples were all together and uh, telling telling the ones that weren't there that they had seen Jesus after the resurrection. But what did Thomas say in John 20, 29? That's right. He said, unless I see, unless I see the nail prints in his hands, unless I see uh, in his sides and in his feet, Thomas made this declaration, I will not believe. Amen. Faith is a choice. Faith is a choice. He said, I will not. So we're going to be a people that does exactly what Pastor was talking about, that there is no higher authority in our life than God's word. And I need nothing. I need nothing except his word to act on, to believe, and to be putting in my mouth. I need nothing but his word. I need nothing but his word. You need nothing but his word. You want to see miracles in your life? That's when we hold the word up here. We make it final authority in our life. And we do just what this nobleman did. And we receive his word. We believe it. And we go on our way. Amen. We need nothing but God's word. Nothing. Uh, let's go to Luke 17. This is a, a, a similar sort of story Luke 17 11 we're going to look at the 10 lepers it says and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village there met him 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off say afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. How many of you know they were a ways off? They were full of leprosy. Uh, they, they weren't close by. And when he saw them, he said unto them, say, he said. Amen. All right. So here again, Jesus is going to deliver a word. All right. And he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And so in that day, the only reason that they would go and show themselves to the priest is if they were healed of their leprosy. So he could, so the priest could reinstate, them, reinstate a leper uh, into society. But this was the word. This was the word that Jesus said, go show yourself unto the priest. Now, if they were going by what they saw, they would have continued to stand there. Because there was still leprosy in their bodies. And this is something as people of faith that we are, uh, we're going to learn and we're going to grow in and we're going to uh, develop in that when I act, when you act on God's word... That's when his power meets you. That's when it, it, it's not going to, his power would not have come to bear in the lepers' lives had they kept standing there waiting to see something with their eyes. He said, go your way and show yourself to the priests. Amen. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Ooh, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. I'm telling you, there is no greater high ever than to see a promise of God in his word and act on it. And act on it. You know, faith comes by hearing. Is that right? 
and hearing by the word of God. But faith isn't released by hearing. Faith is not released by hearing. Faith is released by saying and by acting. By coming up under the word that we're hearing. Amen. It, it requires action. It requires us to do something. And, uh, and I believe, uh, I'm just believing that this is a night of uh, more mobility in all of our lives in that area. More, more movement. More movement on that word that we're releasing faith by our words and by our actions. We're waiting on the power of God to come to bear on our situation. But that's all we're doing is we're waiting. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And there is some faith that needs to be released. Yeah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so as they went, they were cleansed. I have found this uh, to be so true in, in just standing and believing for healing to manifest in my body. Like I said, we have to be a people uh, that when things don't happen instantaneously, that we let go of our faith and we think that nothing is working. We want to be just like these lepers that believe the word of the Lord and then go our way. And then go our way. And as they went, they were healed. I want to, uh, I'm going to bring this up, and uh, not tonight, but maybe another night, we'll have uh, Trenton share. But the other night at night of prayer, uh, he came in on crutches. And at the end of prayer, Kyle said, Hey, uh, I want to pray. Let's pray for him. And so the people that were here, we prayed for him. Uh, re we released faith in the healing word of God. And uh, Kyle said, now do something. Now do something that you couldn't do. So we're not doing something to see if the word worked. We're giving action to what we believe. Amen. So Trenton, he hops right up. He, he, didn't, he didn't whine. He didn't say, oh, this hurts. He didn't say, oh, I can't do this. He got up. He got up and he immediately started walking. And Kyle said, now, this is just like when the lepers said, as they went, they were healed. So what was happening? Trenton was giving action to his faith. I believe. I believe that the power of God went in me. I believe that I'm healed of the Lord. And he didn't just sit there waiting for his knee to feel better, for, for his knee to have no pain whatsoever before he got up and gave action to what he believed. And, uh, he wa and then there was a video that night that, um, that Jennifer took, and he was walking up the stairs to his house with no crutches. And then the next day, he was in church walking and uh, setting up tables for teen night the next Saturday. So that is giving action to our faith, and as we go, as we go, action to our faith. We're giving action to what we believe, and the power of God meets us in that place. Amen. Amen. So in both of these cases, Jesus sent his faith-filled words to do the work. Do you know, and I've said this over and over, uh, you can receive your healing just from sitting I shouldn't say just, but from sitting under the word, receiving it, and acting on it. Amen. Amen. Jesus sent faith-filled words, Psalms 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So... So the, the healing power, the healing virtue, the power of God is as much in his word uh, as, it is, as it was in the person of Jesus. His word. His word. And that's why Pastor was talking about the elevating and the putting of the word in the highest position in our lives. Whether we understand it or not, if we'll give ourselves to it and come up underneath it, the power in that word will do the work in our lives. All right, so what does the Bible have to say about the words of our mouth? Landon said it today, I mean said it a uh, while ago. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
So here's the thing. Whether we believe this or not, it's still the truth. Are we reading Bible? Death and life are in the power of our tongue. It's spiritual law. It is spiritual law. Proverbs 6, 2 says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. So, so here's the thing about words, and this is how God created us as a speaking spirit in his image. Words are going to either, in our lives, they're either going to transmit faith and life, or they're going to transmit unbelief and death. Amen. Amen. Words are the containers that carry what we believe. So, so if we are, I mean, the Bible tells us, uh, did that come up there, Proverbs um, 6, 2? That we are snared by the words of our mouth. Boy, that sounded hick, didn't it? Snared. Pretty, pretty hickish. But we're snared by the words of our mouth. What, what does that mean? When I'm talking death and defeat and lack and sickness and, and not enough, when I'm talking uh, about what I don't have and about what I can't do, I am ministering death to myself. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> so God's word in our hearts and in our mouth. And, and we know this in Romans 10, if you want to go ahead and be uh, turning there. God's word doesn't work for us just because we believe it. We've got to say it. It has to be in our mouth. The, the, the word of God and the word of faith must be in two places. It must be in our heart, but it also must be in our mouth. This is the way we are born again. I mean, you know, this we, um, religion and religious spirits just work overtime on making this difficult. And, and, and truly, it is not difficult. Romans 10, let's, uh, Romans 10, 10. I may have messed up and not sent all of, uh, all of the scriptures. My fault. There it is. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, <clears throat> and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you see those two places right there? That, that the word of God has to be in two places. That we believe it in our heart. But again, we can't just believe and expect it to work for us. Is that right? It says confession is made into salvation. And so this is the way his word works uh, with every other promise. We believe in our heart and we confess something with our mouth. What are we confessing? We're confessing God's word. We're confessing what God says about our situation. Amen. Uh, I was listening to, uh, to a minister, actually, Pastor Nancy Dufresne. She made this statement. She said, walking through her house one day, uh, this just come up out of her spirit. She was just walking around doing housework or whatever. And uh, the scripture of Hebrews 13, 6, obviously she didn't say thir Hebrews 13, 6. But she said, I will boldly say the Lord is my helper. How many of you know that's a good confession to have in our mouth? Amen. Amen. I boldly say that the Lord is my helper. And she said at that moment God said to her, she, uh, he said, do you know how I help you? When you put my word in your mouth, that's how I help you. Amen. How, how do I help you, God said. When, when you put God's word in your mouth, that's how he helps us. Jeremiah 1, let's turn there. And I pray <clears throat> these may be familiar scriptures to you. These may be unfamiliar scriptures to you. Uh, but I pray that we, that we don't sit and um, I just pray that we keep our heart open and let the Lord minister truth to us because there's answers right here. There's answers for our life right here. I want to read uh, several uh, verses here in Jeremiah 1. I'm going to start in verse 4. And it says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah. 
Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, this sounds very familiar as Ephesians 2. He's saying the same thing to you. Before... Uh, before you were ever born, he had a preordained path for you to walk upon. Ephesians 2.10. All right? He knew you. He prepared a path for your feet to walk upon. Uh, but he's talking to Jeremiah here, and he said, And I've appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am only a youth. So when God says, say not, what are we to do? Say not. So when God gives us an instruction in his word to do or to come up under, our response is not to, not to be, say, God, I can't do that. God says, don't do that. Don't say that. It matters what we say when God's dealing with us about something. When he brings truth to us in his word, we're not to say, God, I can't do that. <clears throat> say not, I am only a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I shall send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. How is he, as a prophet to the nation, how is he going to root out and pull down and destroy and overthrow and to build and to plant in a nation? By the words that God put in his mouth. And that's how you're going to build your life. That's how you are going to walk out the call of God on your life by putting his word in your mouth and saying that. And remember, this isn't a one-time thing. This is not just a one-time thing. This is our lifestyle. This is our lifestyle that we keep the word not only in our heart, but we keep it in our mouth. There's some things in our families. There's some things uh, in our workplaces. There's some things that need to be torn down in the spirit realm so that people can receive the gospel into their heart. Amen. And that's only going to be done by the words of faith that we're releasing that God has given us by the spirit. Amen. Words have to be released. God's words have to be released. <clears throat> Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch or a shoot of an almond tree, the emblem of alertness and activity blossoming in late winter. Then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. In the King James, it says, thou hast well seen, for I hasten to my word to perform it. God watches over. He hastens to his word. He hastens to his word to perform it. The word coming out of our mouth, not, not the word that we just believe, the word that is in our heart, but it's coming out of our mouth. God's watching over his word to perform it. He's not watching. It doesn't say he's watching over your need. It doesn't say that. He's, he's, he's looking for his word. He performs his word. God watches over his word to perform it. So my question would be, what is in your mouth? What is in your mouth? We blame God for not, uh, for not doing some things in our life, but he's looking for the word. He's looking for his word. He's looking for his word to perform in your life. I feel like y'all are really quiet. Taking notes? Okay. Okay. So faith says something. Amen? God watches over his word. He hastens to his word. That's why there is no substitute 
for us not only hiding the word in our heart, but having his word, our confessions of faith in our mouth. Amen. Amen. When things aren't looking like life, when there has been uh, an attack or if, however, it, you know, the Bible tells us that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Is that right? Yes. But Jesus said, but I've come to give you life in abundance to the full till it overflows. So when, when, the, uh, um, when the enemy comes to make a move into our life to bring destruction, we've only... If we're not taking his word and laying it on top of what the enemy is bringing to our lives, then we're just going to be um, a lame duck. I kind of stumbled over that. Does that make sense? He's, He's looking for his word. He's looking for his word. And if we don't have his word again, like Pastor said, if we don't have it in the highest place in our lives, as final authority in our lives, uh, then we're not going to be given our attention to it. And if we're not given our attention to it, it's certainly not going to be coming up and out of us. <clears throat> Mark 5. Let's turn there. We're going to look at um, the story of the woman with the issue of blood. We're going to start in verse uh, 25. And it says, And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but instead grew worse. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus. What does that mean? She heard the reports concerning Jesus. So uh, that tells me that faith, faith was coming. She had heard the reports about Jesus. Preaching Jesus. Everyone. Everywhere. She heard the report about Jesus. And faith came. And here's the thing with the woman with the issue of blood. It said, um, uh, da, 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 da. did I already read 26? Endured much, suffering under the hands. Oh, yeah, I already read that. She heard the reports concerning Jesus, verse 27. And she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. So she heard, she heard the preaching of Jesus. She heard the reports of Jesus. And what did it do? What, what did it do on the inside of her? It, it caused her to get up and do something, didn't it? She didn't stay in her house and just hope Jesus passed by. She didn't stay in her house and just hope that Jesus, because if it was his will to heal her, then he would know that and he would come to her house and do that. Nope. She heard the good news about Jesus and she acted on what she heard. Amen. She got out of that house and she went to where he was. And I'm telling you, if the faith in our hearts, listen, if, if, if the faith that we say we, that we have, if it's not enough to move our mouth and to move us to action to do something, then it is certainly not going to move the situation in our lives. Amen. So many times I, I feel like as God's people, we're waiting on, on God to come by, on Jesus to come by. When we hear the word and faith arises, act on it. That's Again, that's when the power of God meets us. That's faith. It's faith in action. Whoa, hello. Faith in action. Let's see what else it says here. Verse 28. She came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. Verse 28. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. So it's interesting to me that uh, this woman not only got herself up out of her house 
drug herself. How many of you know that wasn't convenient? We're a people of convenience, you guys. We're a people of convenience. And if it's not convenient, if it doesn't line up with what's convenient for us, uh, then a lot of times we, we forfeit and we do without what Jesus is offering. <clears throat> she did what wasn't convenient. In fact, she shouldn't have been even out in public. Y'all know that, right? But she believed so much in her heart the report she heard about Jesus. And she kept saying, and she kept saying, and she kept saying, if I, but to, if I just touch his garment. She kept saying, if I just touch his garment. That, that was her, her point of uh, contact. That was her release, the releasing, the releasing of her faith when she kept saying that. If I just touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. If I just touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. Amen. What are you saying? What are you saying? What actions are you taking when it comes to God's promises? Are, are we in wait mode? Are we in wait mode? Or are we giving action to the word of God that we've seen uh, in his word? Are we giving action to it? Remember, all we need, all, all, all faith needs is a word from God. All faith needs is a word from God. And the lepers and, and, and the noblemen, the word from Jesus. And then they turned their back and they went their way. All, acting on nothing but his word. Acting on nothing but his word. We've talked so much about us being people that live by faith and not by sight. Is that right? Living by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> and if we limit ourselves to trying to receive from the Lord based on things that we see, um, we're going to do without. Amen. All right. Romans 4. Let's go to Romans 4. 4.17. I'll read it up there. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, who quickens the dead. Aren't you glad that we have a God who quickens the dead? Hallelujah. From death to life, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if you're born again, dwells on the inside of you. How many of you realize that's a whole lot of power? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if you are born again, dwells on the inside of you. Glory to God. We need to be more excited about that. Hallelujah. Uh, and God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. So we know that this is a, a fairly familiar uh, faith verse who calls those things which be not as though they were. Now, now, please understand this, that calling those things that be not, it's not that they don't exist. They exist in the spirit realm. But we need them in the natural realm or the physical realm. And so this word call, and I, Pastor, was it you that talked about summons? Yep, summons. This word call is... is, is uh, uh, the same word as summons. Like if you are summoned to, to, uh, to, for jury duty, you don't have any choice. You're going, baby. Is that right? Summoned. The God who calls those things, who summons those things that be not, they're not in the natural, but they are very real in the spiritual. So don't think that they don't exist. They exist in the spirit realm. And, it, and it's our calling that brings them from the spirit realm into the natural realm. Amen. Summons it. You have, 
you have no choice, healing, but to come into my life. For I'm calling those things that be not in this natural, uh, in this natural arena in my body. I'm calling for it out of the spirit realm. I'm calling my body whole. For it is written that by his stripes I was healed. That's how we call for those things that be not in this natural realm as though they already were. And the truth of it is, they already are. Amen. So we have to cooperate with spiritual truths in our heart and in our mouth. We have to cooperate with it. We have to call for it. We have to summons it. Amen. To bring it in to this natural realm where we're needing it. And this is for faith. This, uh, this is for healing. This is for finances. This is for uh, uh, depression. This is for our children, what, whatever it is. Amen. So faith calls and, and faith summons. And in Genesis 1, we know that it's full of what God said. Is that right? And God said, and God said, and God said. What was he doing? He was calling for what he was wanting. He was calling for what he was wanting. He said, light be. Can I tell you that he called for what already existed on the inside of him? God is a spirit. Is that right? And light already existed on the inside of him. So he was calling forth from the spirit realm. He called forth light be in the natural realm. Amen. That's We call. We call those things that be not. We call those things that be not as though they were. And uh, the, sa- the same is true that when we're doing that for our faith to work. For our faith to work. Remember the word and faith has to be in two places. Where at? In our heart and in our mouth, right? So we're calling forth for those things. Uh, and... And if healing is already... How would, how would healing be in my heart? How would healing be in your heart? By, by the Word. That's right. By the Word. By hearing the Word. That's how healing is going to be in your heart. By hearing the Word of God. So we call. We call. We call. It's got to be in our heart and in our mouth. God's Word. The Word of faith. In our heart and in our mouth. And when things don't line up with our redemption, oh, I want to get to this. When things don't line up uh, with our redemption, then we've got to take a higher authority and lay it on uh, the circumstance. Amen. And we do that with our mouths. We do that with our mouths. That's what, we, we can't. We're not ever going to outgrow. We're just not ever going to outgrow the basics of meditating on God's Word and the confession of our faith, of us saying who we are in Christ Jesus, of what we have in Christ Jesus. We're not ever going to outgrow this. Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the Amplified says, from the hand who he's delivered from the hand of the adversary. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying? I'm, at, I'm asking you, what are you saying in the situations that you're looking at? Are, are you talking about your redemption? Are you saying that you're redeemed or are you talking about the problem? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We've got to be saying something, people. That was rude. I didn't like how that came out. We've got to be saying something, family. Seriously. We have to be saying something. And not just anything. We have to be saying what God says about the situation. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. I want to read this. Oh, golly. One of my, one of my favorites. All right. I'm going to read it up there while I'm turning to another one down here. This ought to be. We'll see how good I am. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 
Come on now, we have benefits. Say, I have benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, mm, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, and who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's a whole lot of good right there. That's a whole lot of good. This is a whole lot of, of God's good word to have in our mouth and make a declaration of every single day. Glory to God. We have a God who forgives all of our sin, who heals all of our diseases, who delivers us from destruction, who, who crowns us with tender mercies, loving kindness. Glory to God who satisfies our mouth with good things. What does that mean? who satisfies our mouth with good things. He satisfies our, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. What's going to renew my youth? The Word of God. What's going to renew your youth? The Word of God. What's going to bring your wayward kids home? The Word of God. What's going to break every addiction in your life? What's going to break off depression from your life? What's going to bring the money and the finances in so that you can be a blessing to all those around you? The Word of God. The Word of God. In your heart and in your mouth. So if my youth is going to be renewed like the eagles, it says that he satisfies my mouth with good things. He satisfies my mouth with his Word. He satisfied. He gave me his Word. He gave me his word. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's look at Matthew. <clears throat> I wasn't very good. I didn't get there. Um, Matthew 12. I'm going to read it in the Amplified in verse 34 and 35. It says, You offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the fullness, the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. How many of you have ever heard that? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Is that right? Yes. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if I have an abundance of God's word in my life, that's what my mouth is going to be speaking if I have an abundance of unbelief, of, of negativity, if I have an abundance of what is going on in the world and what the news says, if I have an abundance uh, of what, uh, what's going on in the world in my heart, uh, my mouth is going to speak that. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. Let's look at verse 35 then. It says, The good man from the inner good treasure flings forth good things. And the evil man out of his inner evil storehouse flings forth evil things. Uh, this scripture right here calls words things. Right? It calls words things. We fling with the words of our mouth. We're flinging forth things in our lives. <clears throat> Hebrews 3, 1. <clears throat> I am, I am going to get done, but I, I do want to finish these last uh, three scriptures. Hebrews 3, 1. Uh, <clears throat> it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. And so that word profession can also mean confession. Uh, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession. Notice that it doesn't say he's the high priest of our faith. It says he's the high priest of our confession. He's watching over his word to perform it. Jesus is the high priest of our profession. He's the high priest of our confession. His, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The Lord's looking. He's looking for his word. He's looking for his word to perform in your life. Amen. 
Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Let us hold fast. What does that mean? Let us hold tight. Let us hold tight to the profession of our faith, to the confession of our faith. Why is it that we would hold, have to hold fast or we would have to hold tight to it? That's right, because there's opposition. There's opposition. And the only thing that the enemy wants uh, in, in, out of your heart is the word of God. All he wants to do is pluck it out of your heart and get it out of your mouth. So we're instructed to hold fast the confession of our faith. Hold fast to it. Hold fast to it. Say, I'm holding fast. Cool. I thought, yes, Lord. <laughs> uh, turn to 1 Samuel 17, and I'm closing with this. I have this sticky note. Um, I did have. I was in. I was in here uh, today, so I must have moved my sticky note. But in, on this page in my Bible, um, oh yeah, I was wrong, on the wrong page. There it is. When circumstances, and we're we're going to read two verses about David and Goliath. How many have heard the story of David and Goliath? When circumstances are marking your redemption, you better be saying something. When the circumstances of life are mocking your redemption, you better be saying something. My, my sticky note says that, and it says, Mona, act like God's word is true. So, so we know, I'm just going to pick up here in, uh, in verse 45. David talking to Goliath, you know, and of course we know that, that the enemy was taunting him, right? How many of you have ever had taunting circumstances in your life, right? Again, we better be saying something. We better have the word, the word of God in our hearts and in our mouths, and we better be talking back to it. I love what Pastor Mark Hankins says. He says, we can't run at our giants with our mouth closed. We can't run at our giants with our mouth closed. So David was talking to Goliath here after, like, like I said, after, the, after he's been taunting him. And he said, the Philistines said to David, uh, come to me and I will give your flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, now listen, this day, David's declaring something to him, and that's what faith does. Faith declares the end from the beginning. Anything that you're facing Faith declares the end from the beginning. How can we do that? Because we have God's word on it. Because we have God's word on it. We declare the end from the beginning. And that's what David did right here. He opened up his mouth and he said, This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. I will smite you. I'm going to take your head off. I'm going to give your carcass uh, carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day and to the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Glory to God. Do you know we can be bold? We can be bold like that when we have the word of God on a situation. And we can talk to the situations and we can say this is how it's going to be in my life. Hallelujah. And all the world all the world is going to know there is a God in the earth. All the world's going to know, just like that, just like the verse in, in, in Psalms 92, that we're living memorials in the earth to show and declare that the Lord is upright and he's faithful to his promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so we're taking the word of God and we're putting it in our mouth. And there's things in our bodies, things in our household finances, uh, the call of God in our life, 
Um, they're not going to start moving and changing until we lay something greater on what it's saying to us. Do you understand? And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes things keep, keep popping out of place. You know? Ever gone to a chiropractor and they have to do the adjustments? And because, because there's something in your life that has been so accustomed to not being in place. And so although it gets adjusted, it can pop back out again. And so, and so adjust it again and adjust it again. And, th and that's the same with our walk of faith and with the things in our lives. Our lives have been going down a trajectory sometimes in a certain direction, so accustomed to that place that they don't stay in place the first time that we tell it to. It, it, it'll have a tendency to slip back out. So what are we supposed to do? We keep the word on it and we refuse to let it stay out of place. Nope, I'm bringing you back into line under the authority of God's Word. And, and, and we stay at it. And we stay at it. Amen, Pastor. <clears throat> All right. So the Word of God in our mouth not only moves the Lord, but it moves our feet, right? So it's the action, the word of God. So, so good, so good. And it's the walk of faith, right? Like she said, keep adjusting, keep adjusting. We walk by faith. If I'm going to continue to walk, James 3, the word. What I wanted to close with tonight is I wanted to go back to Jeremiah, and, and we're going to stand, and we're going to, and we're going to take, um, take a minute, and we're going to, how many of you would agree that if you come together, it might be good to take a, Ask the Lord why, what you want us to pray, what you want us to say. Going back to Jeremiah chapter 1. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And so the God's words in your mouth, God's words in my mouth, have been appointed to us uh, today uh, to, for, to declare things over nations, over kingdoms, to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. All of our words do a lot of things. And um, I think it would be wise uh, while we're here tonight uh, to use our words and, um, and not just my words, but the words, your words, uh, to tear some things down, to build some things up. And I just have my heart over our nation and over the nations of Israel. The Bible tells us to bless Israel, you know, to bless. And so we're going to bless them tonight. Um, but we're going to take authority. We're going to tear some things down. And, and what comes to your heart, we believe in our heart. Therefore, like he, the Lord speaks to you and me, not here, but here. So I want you to listen tonight. Like we're, this is an exercise of faith. Okay? So if there, I love how God, God works. He shows you things, and, and he moves you with compassion. It's interesting how God, the Bible tells that Jesus was moved with compassion, and compassion moved him to... to, to with his, with his mouth, direct his disciples on what, as what to do. And so I just want you to yield to that tonight as we, just, as we pray. I'm going to pray, but I want you what you get in your heart. Maybe you've heard something. Maybe you've seen something. And there's all this, but Lord, what do you say about that? And so we're going to use our words to build up. Some of you, some of you are going to be building. Some of you are going to be planning. Some of you are going to be declaring some things over some nations. Some of you are going to be tearing down some strongholds. And this is what's so cool. We, we need to use this. The Bible tells us that, first of all, pray for all men, right? For those in authority, right? That you could, Anyway, so let's thank you, Father. Father. Father, we come to you tonight. And we thank you for the words, your words in our mouth. And so we yield our mouth. And this is a powerful way to pray right here. Before you ever start praying, you yield your mouth to the Lord. Father, I yield my mouth. We yield our mouths to you tonight. That we would we would build up, that we would tear down, that there would be your will brought about even in this moment, uh, right now, released here on this earth. Father, we thank you for, for Israel right now. We thank you for your people. We thank you for what you're doing over there. You're at work. Yeah, we say you're at work. We declare you are at work. Father, we thank you for angels released right now uh, 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 upon the... Uh, Every, on every person. We thank you that your heart is for people. 
Father, thank you that you're just visiting, that you're redeeming, that you're protecting. Father, we thank you for the fullness of, 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 of your plan, what the enemy meant for evil. Father, we thank you that you're working for good. So there's a good work going on. We thank you for a good work going on. We thank you for light on the scene right now in the name of Jesus. Light on the scene uh, uh, at the top levels of leadership. Father, thank you for light on the scene. Light on the scene in our government. Father, thank you for light. Thank you for light. Thank you for light uh, uh, upon our president. Thank you for light on the borders. Thank you for light to, to your people. Father, thank you. And we just pray Psalms 91 uh, over us. Father, we thank you for a secret place of the Most High. Uh, we thank you for a shadow uh, the, uh, and under your wing. We thank you for a protection. We thank you for a re redemption. We thank you for that for every child of God. And we declare peace over minds and over hearts. And we declare your word. We put your words in our mouth. We, we, we say what you say. Father, we just yield our mouths. Uh, and we make it a point tonight that over in, and in the next coming days, when we see something, we would ask you, what do you say? And we would come into agreement just as, you, just as Jeremiah did. That you would put your words in our mouth. So we, 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 we follow that cue. What do you say? And we'll say it. And we'll release your word here in this earth. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. That you could watch over it to perform it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Prayers are more powerful than we give credit. The Bible tells us that even in, right now there's prayers that are being stored up. And he pours them out. At the, he poured in Revelation talks about him pouring them out so he can move. So even this is this is powerful that even that he that there are prayers God need, needs because he's given man the earth authority. He needs the will of man because he is just and he he operates the, according to his law. And so he needs people's prayers or people's will or the words released on this in this earth to be able to move. So it tells us this in Revelation when you have uh, 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 things come to the like the culmination. How many of you know in the culmination? There's a lot of things going on and needing to happen, and God's happened to work and He's been patient with us, you know. And He's been, but He's been, He's been storing up prayers. He's been having people pray because He needs to be able to move uh, at a moment on a, on a word. And so I'm telling you, you don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop praying for your kids. Don't ever stop praying for your mom. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop. Because in a moment, God just poured out some prayers. And I'm telling you, don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. And uh, so thank you, Lord. Uh, Father, we just bless the, the, these people tonight. Father, we thank you that as they go, they go prosperous. We thank you that they go uh, blessed coming and, and going. Father, we do thank you that you, we are the head and not the tail. And we lack no good thing. We thank you for it. Show us how to be, uh, to be a light for you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday.